All right, so for this demo, let's uh, do uh, a castle and, and some water and uh, maybe kind of like a sort of European kind of fantasy environment. So what I'm going to do is just start blocking in some some colors. And first of all, I want to kind of create like three thumbnails just so we've got like a few different ideas of, of things that we could do. So I've got a bunch of reference here that I've kind of um, sourced and, and I'm looking at and sort of trying to uh, look, find ideas that are going to inspire me to create like a few different compositions. Alright, so let's use that reference there on the right and kind of start, um, you know, just blocking in some ideas. So I'm even just going to colour pick off, off the reference and, and, and just use that to, to help me out. You know, generate a palette. And I'm just using a nice texture brush here which will give me like plenty of free information. So in this one, just trying to block in like a bit of a um, kind of like a shoreline. Um, just thinking about where the where the rocks would go, where the castle might go. Let's just block that that castle shaping kind of around there, sort of nicely on our little rule of thirds intersection point, I guess. And and to be honest, at this stage, not thinking about that too much. Just more thinking about like the shapes and and uh, the colours. Let's just think about that. Some sort of background mountain up there. Just what the kind of tone is and some of the sky. And so with that with that brush, you know, you're really getting some nice edges, getting some soft edges and some harder edges. Just want that to kind of lead down into the into the castle. Just thinking about just really subtly playing with a bit of lighting. So just think about how that sort of castle can kind of transition up in from the rocks and the and the the kind of water's edge. Just trying to define all that a little bit better. Just with our colour in the water, just trying to have a bit of subtle uh, vibration, just those colours, similar value but slightly different hue. Still thinking of like the design and the composition in in these areas, and for me this is this is the most fun part of the painting process. You know, just coming out with quick little ideas and thumbnails. You know, where it doesn't really matter too much. You know, you're not restrained by anything. You're just coming up with ideas. Okay, so let's just start on thumbnail number two now, and just generate another idea that we could that we could use and then we can sort of either pick one or we could use a combination of of the three of them um, it's always sort of um, sometimes I find you know when you're in your daily workflow like that'll happen a bit you'll do a few thumbnails and then you end up sort of using a combination of of all of them because often you'll find that you do something sort of uniquely uh, interesting in each one and kind of want to combine that to to create the best um, solution for a finished painting I guess And just using that photo on the right just to colour pick some of these sky values off of. So with this one, I'm trying to think of where my castle might go. So I want it to be a real uh, strong focal point here. So I'm shifting it to like pretty central within the painting, not smack bang in the middle, but pretty close. But that can sometimes be okay if you want something to really be a, a, a focal point of your of your painting. And just trying to ha think how these other mountains could maybe transition down, where the water could go, sort of where the horizon line is. 
you know, it's nicely in that bottom third there. Just starting to indicate a bit of form, like, form to, to some of the areas. Quite often what I'll do is I'll want a, a colour, try to find a colour, and I'll find something that's like the similar kind of colour, but it's not working exactly within the palette, so I'll just paint it lightly, and with this brush, because the because you have a transfer turned on, so there's a bit of opacity pen pressure, you can just lightly brush it onto your composition and then colour pick off that, and that will sort of, then you'll find more a more subtle colour to, to work with. Okay, let's so let's move on to this third uh, composition here. This little thumbnail. And just start really roughly blocking this in. So just coming up with like another idea. Just playing around with the palette here and you know the greens and the the purples in the in the sky. So maybe this one has a bit of a, a river kind of leading up to this, this castle, kind of down in this valley area. And you can see how with that texture brush, it, you do get a lot of thr uh, free information that you kind of r read. Um, things into so for example those those mountains kind of appeared pretty quickly just via pressing a little bit harder with the brush so that that takes a while like a fair bit of practice to control those those elements and, and just I'm wanting to that castle to be you know the, the focal point so I'm putting a few little dabs of highlights and things just to make your eye kind of look in that direction I'm just going to kind of work that up on, on all of these thumbnails here and just take them a little bit further so on this one here just starting to play around with a few of those sort of shadow type of areas and, and other build ups of shapes and how these elements kind of break up and some little indications of textures and things just to get it just to get a little bit more of an idea of, of what I'm after there So now we've got our one, two, and three thumbnails. So I've chosen number three to, to kind of paint up a bit more. And I'm just going to pull in this photo here. It kind of fits this painting quite well. Um, so let's use this as a nice little uh, starting base. And what I'm going to do is go through my layer settings and going to see if we can just use it as a base to start painting from and giving us a few kind of free ideas along along the way so there's a couple of layer settings that are really useful when you quickly block you know using photos to help you in your in your paintings so one is lighten and one is darken they essentially kind of work the same way um, one kind of works with all the, the highlights of the painting and, and one kind of works within all the shadows of the painting and Let's use a, a combination of um, both of these. Let's just go into the lighten one and, and just start erasing some of those, those sky details. So basically what we're doing here is just erasing it back to our painting and keeping some details and, and removing others. So, and, and this is really important just to you know, train your eye, I guess, to see you know, the bits that are working and the, and the bits that aren't, like recognize what's, what's going on and the bits that you want to use. So just erasing out this sort of light water here, just wanting to keep the, the similar uh, shoreline to what I originally painted. Keeping that foreground pretty much the, the same. Now I'm going to change this to, to darken. And you can see how that's really going to give us some nice textures in the grass and some of those rocks there. But I still want to control it. I want to erase out the parts that I that I don't want to use and, and keep in the parts that are useful to the painting. Now that I've sort of blocked this in roughly, let's just copy and paste everything onto a new layer and um, 
just make all this a little bit bigger and just remove those other thumbnails because yeah we're definitely going this one now and I'm just making a new mask around my painting here so now I've sort of isolated it and, and got a nice clean canvas to work on now on my other screen and you can see in my navigator there I've got some reference that I'm working from so I'm just going to go ahead and, and grab some photos from my reference folders here and, and uh, use it on my painting. And just go through the layer settings just to see what sort of ideas you can get and find elements that you like and just dropping that under my mask layer and then just going to go in and erase out the, the parts that I don't want. I'm hitting Control M and dropping the curves down, just the, the whole sort of RGB channel of the, the curves, just so everything's like a little bit darker. I'm just going to drag in some, some more reference here. just going through the layer settings erasing out all the bits that, are, that aren't working for me here we see how in those background mountains we can really build up the texture nice and quickly but we're really only using kind of like tiny bits of information from from each of the photos and then once we kind of incorporate the photos and kind of get it working to how you want it then you need to go back in and paint now I'm just cropping this all down a bit I have my reference on another on another um, page here but I'm just cropping my main painting down so that then I can see the whole thing in my navigator there on the right hand side and I use this a lot just to um, paint with to see how things look from a, from a distance essentially so let's just go and, and grab some other reference here and I just want that kind of mountain there at the in the background just to use here. Just going to raise everything else out. Let's just move all that up a bit more. I'm just going to go in and select that kind of mid-ground plane there and just just delete it out of this photo we can do a bit of sort of erase it back into the painting a little bit more 